So far, we've talked about exoplanets a lot. We've never actually seen them. We've seen the effect they have on their star. We've seen them blocking out the light of the background star. We may have picked up the light from them, merged in with the light of the background star. But it'd be really nice to actually see the damn things. Well, that's really the holy grail, Paul, to actually see the things. Yes, I mean, just apart from, you know, do you really believe they're there until you've seen them? If we see them, we might be able to find the far away ones. All our techniques so far have been really good at finding things pretty close in. Even the gravitational lensing only works out to about Jupiter or Saturn's orbit. Anything further out, we're not going to pick up by any other method. And if we see them, we're going to be able to know what color they are, and if we can take a spectrograph, spect put a spectrograph onto them, we'll actually be able to see what they're made out of. And we might be able to see if they're made out of water and stuff. But we have a problem. If you recall, the difficulty is Christine here taking over the world, so we can't see anything. So as you have a star shining, it completely obliterates everything else that, that we could possibly see. Yes, so the difference we're talking about here between a candle and full beam headlights is about a factor of a thousand. Let's calculate what the difference in brightness between a star and a planet is. Okay, so let's imagine we're looking at a star and a nearby planet. And we want to know how much fainter the planet is than the star. Now let's assume that this planet is only shining by reflected light, which is the case at optical wavelengths in our own solar system. So we've got to ask, we've got all the light coming out in all directions from the star, and some fraction of it will hit the planet, and then bounce back off in all different directions, and some fraction of that will come to us. So the first question is, what fraction of all the light from the star will hit the planet? Now we'll assume the light from the star is spread uniformly over a sphere. Let's call that radius d, which is the distance of the planet from the star. So the flux out of the sphere is just the luminosity of the star over 4 pi d squared. Now the radiation actually hitting the planet is going to be its cross-sectional area, pi r squared, where r is the radius of the planet, times the flux. So flux hitting planet is going to be pi r squared equals a quarter r over d squared times the luminosity of the star. So that means, we'll, we'll now assume that all the radiation that hits the planet reflects off. And we'll also assume it reflects in all angles in practice. The amount bouncing off in different directions will be different, there'll be less going this way than that way, but let's just assume on average it's all in the same direction. In that case, the luminosity of the planet is going to be this. So the ratio of the luminosity of the star to the planet is going to be L over that. So it's going to be 4 d on r squared. So it's the ratio. If we plug in some numbers, um, let's say you take, for example, Jupiter. So for Jupiter, its radius is about 7 by 10 to the 7 meters. Its distance from the sun is 5 astronomical units. So for Jupiter, that comes out as about um, 5 by 10 to the 8. So nearly a billion times difference. And that's assuming that all the light that hits the planet bounces off in practice. Only a small fraction is going to be... So in reality, the ratio of star brightness to planet brightness for something like Jupiter is going to be about 10 to the 9, about a factor of a billion.